Hello and welcome back, it is Shrike here with another D&D &D video and today we're going to be jumping back into Tasha's Cauldron of Everything to see what additional options the Barbarian has. So in this book each class has been given optional class features as well as some extra subclasses so we're going to be going through all of the ones for the Barbarian. I've been going through all of the content of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything so if there's anything else that you would like to look at go across to my channel and check it out. But without further ado let's have a look at the optional class features for the Barbarian. And just in case you're not aware these are features that are optional to add on to the class so talk to your DM beforehand these aren't features that you're definitely going to get if you pick that class. The first of which is called Primal Knowledge and this is something you get at 3rd level and then again at 10th level. And what happens is you gain one proficiency with a skill that is in the barbarian skill list so this is a list of skills that you'll have to pick at level one when you're creating a barbarian so at level three and at level 10 you get an additional one it's a pretty simple skill but it's something that's nice to have and when you're adding on these additional class features you don't want them to be too powerful and then the second optional class feature that Tasha's Cauldron of Everything adds is called Instinctive Pounce. And with this feature, when you use a bonus action to enter your rage, you can move half of your speed. Once again, nothing game breaking, just something little that is nice to have in addition to the rest of the class features that the Barbarian gets. So they're the two optional class features that the book has given you. So let's have a look at the subclasses it's added, starting with Path of the Beast. So the idea for this subclass is that there is a bestial spark deep within your soul that when you rage it bursts out. And then this will physically change the form of the barbarian giving them jagged teeth, long claws or a long tail. So when you pick this subclass at level 3 you get what is called form of the beast. When you enter the rage you get to choose what type of natural weapon you get between the bite, the claws and a tail. If you choose the bite as your natural weapon, you can then bite someone for 1d8 damage. And then on top of that, you can regain hit points equal to your proficiency bonus if you are below half of your health. It's a pretty nasty attack for your foes at level 3 and being able to regain hit points is always useful in Dungeons and Dragons. But if you were to pick claws, then you do 1d6 damage and on your attack action, you can do another attack. And then finally, if you pick the tail, you do 1d8 damage and you have a reach of 10 feet. On top of that, you get a reaction where if a creature hits you with an attack roll while they're within 10 feet of you, you can roll a d8 and then put the outcome on your AC which is a pretty nice ability, especially if you are going for a more tanky barbarian build. The next ability you get from the subclass is called Bestial Soul. And the first thing you get from that is that your natural weapons now count as magical, which is always something nice to have later on in the game when there are quite a lot of monsters that have resistant to non-magical attacks. On top of that, you get a choice when you finish a short or long rest to adapt to the environment around you, gaining one of the following benefits. You can either gain a swim speed equal to your walking speed and the ability to breathe underwater. You can gain a climbing speed equal to your walking speed and the ability to walk on difficult areas, including the ceiling. Or you can choose that when you jump, you can do an athletics check and put the outcome of that roll onto the distance of your jump. All of these are pretty nice to have and you can swap them out whenever you have a short or long rest. So if you know what, what sort of environment you're going into, you can change it up and have a benefit. The next thing you get at level 10 is called Infectious Fury, which means that when you hit a creature with your natural weapons or while you're raging, they have to succeed a wisdom saving throw or they are cursed with one of the following effects. They must use their reaction to make a melee attack against someone of your choice that, that you can see or they take 2d12 psychic damage. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and you get them back on a long rest. Once again, a nice ability with a few different options that you can choose to do depending on what you want the outcome for that creature to be. And then the final feature you get for Path of the Beast is at level 14 and it's called Call of the Hunt. With this ability, when you enter a rage, you can choose a number of creatures equal to your constitution modifier that are within 30 feet of you. You gain 5 temporary hit points for everyone that is willing and accepts this feature. They also gain the ability that if they are hit with an attack roll and they take damage, they can roll a d6 and remove that from the damage. You get this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and you regain all uses when you finish a long rest. That is quite a nice final ability to help support your party and get them involved with what you're doing and in theory you could end up with quite a lot of temporary hit points every time you rage. And the ability to support the party by reducing the amount of damage they're going to take is always nice as well. So on to the second subclass that Tasha's Cauldron of Everything has added called Path of Wild Magic. 
this subclass is all about being transformed by magic and being more susceptible to the wild magic around the multiverse. Starting with the first ability that you get when you unlock this path at level 3 called Magic Awareness. And with this as an action that you can open your awareness to the magic around you and any magical spell or magical item within 60 feet of you, the location is revealed, as long as it's not behind total cover. When you sense a spell, you also learn that the school of magic that it belongs to. And you can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and you get all of your uses back at a long rest. This is a feature which is only really going to come in handy if there is a lot of magic in your world, or at least enough to make it worthwhile. But it's always something nice to have and using this you can find out if a creature has magical items on their being that maybe they were trying to hide from you. You also get another ability when you pick this path at level three called Wild Surge. And with this ability, whenever you enter a rage, you have to roll on this table and getting one of the effects. Similar to the Wild Magic Sorcerer, this is to add an element of randomness, which makes sense when you're dealing with Wild Magic. When you get to level six, you gain a ability called Bolstering Magic. And with this, you can use an action to touch a creature and give them one of these two benefits. The first of which is that for 10 minutes, the creature can roll a D3 and add that number to their ability checks and attack rolls. And then the second is that the creature can roll a D3 and regain a number of spell slots equal to the number rolled. But once a creature receives this benefit, they can't again until they finish a long rest. You can take this action a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and you get all of the uses again after a long rest. This fits in with the flavour that you're tuned in to the magic of the world and you're being able to now control it a little bit and put some benefit into your party. At level 10 you get unstable backlash. This means that if you take a damage or you fail a saving throw while you are raging, you can use your reaction to roll on the wild magic table. The effect is immediately produced and any effect that might have already been on you is replaced. This is doubling down on the whole wild magic theme and the randomness of this subclass. And then the final ability is at level 14 and it's called Controlled Surge. And this means that whenever you roll on the wild magic table, you can roll a second time and decide which of the outcomes you have. And if you roll the same on both of the dice, you can then ignore the number completely and pick whichever outcome you want. This is to portray that by level 14 you're going to be getting to grips with the magic around you and what's been going on throughout your journey. So there you have it, there are the additional class features and the additional paths that are given to the Barbarian. I really like them, I think that both of them feel very thematic and they have their own flavour that doesn't really cross over too much with any of the others in the Player's Handbook or in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Let me know in the comments if you're going to be playing either of these and make sure to give this video a like if you did find it useful, it helps me to grow this channel. If you haven't bought Tasha's Cauldron of Everything and you're looking to buy it, there is an affiliate link down in the description that, that if you go through there it will take you to Amazon and if you buy through there I get a small amount from Amazon so that will help me to grow the channel and I really appreciate it. I'm going to be going through all of the class features and new subclasses in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, so make sure to subscribe so you see them, and go across to my channel and check out any that already might be there. But until next time, happy gaming.